do you know why it's important for you to understand these things I said until the Spirit of God rests on you to cause you to do things in the way that God wants you to do them you may go left right left right like I called it yesterday grasshopper mentality grasshopper grasshopper no and then somebody say eh, he's trying to take money from us look at you <laughs> no, look, look at you when we held the, the meeting at the dome when, the, when we held the meeting at the dome in spite of the fact that certain things that we wanted were inflated in cost for us we still went ahead and paid for it when you came to the dome did I raise money from you yes, ah Tell me something, say, I refuse to be poor. You see, if I didn't have it, I couldn't have given it. Are you hearing me? I gave it because I had it. I gave it because I had it. And I'm going on. Why? Because I receive from the Spirit of God in my giving. And that's the reason God's given us partners all around the world. I never have to call and cry for money. I never have to. I never have to. So I don't get surprised when people say, the Spirit of God. There's a man, the other day they called me and said, there's a man who listened to one of our teachings. And after listening and listening and listening, he said to himself, I, I can't, I, I just can't stay without doing something about this. He's never met me before. And went there and gave them one million. Now, why did he do it? Because the Spirit of God asked him to do it. We didn't even meet. I'm trying to help you understand something. Let no man deceive you. Don't let somebody keep you. In the wrong place. Can I show you something? Yes. Okay. Turn to the Bible quickly. Book of Ezekiel. Chapter 44. Ezekiel chapter 44. Some of you, you would notice, listen, it's so important that in your giving, in your giving, you become principled. Are you hearing me? The children of givers cannot be the same with those who don't give. They can't be the same. They can't be the same. I believe that there's something that my mom had to do that helped us. And I knew that that was also with my grandmother. As I was growing up, I knew them to always entertain pastors they always gave to pastors they always did but all of us today in my family how come we're all into the ministry all my siblings are but that was because I had a grandmother, apart from a grandfather who was a preacher, the grandmother who knew how to sow seeds, and a mother who knew how to sow seeds. No, you, you, you can stay in one place and be saying, Oh God, please help my children. Oh God, please help my children. Oh God, please save my children. No! The thing to save your children is in your hands. It's in your hand. Let me show it to you here. Did you read what we, what, what we saw just now in that verse 5, Psalm 126? He said, He that goeth forth and weepeth, bearing precious seed, shall doubtless come again with rejoicing. You may be an adult here, but you wee on your bed in the night. You have been praying. They told you your bladder is weak. But you have been praying. It is not changing. Continue praying. And see whether it will change. He said, He that goeth forth and weepeth, this thing has brought shame to you. 
so you are weeping but it says bearing precious seed what is that precious seed he's talking about something that is precious to you that you have to give I had a pain on my side and I was going for a crusade and this meeting was taking place in Canada and I kept every day for about five days I kept feeling it it wasn't so much of a pain but a, a kind of uh, sensation and I prayed about it it didn't go I prayed against it it didn't go I prayed kneeling down it didn't go standing up with my hands up it didn't go lying prostrate on the ground it didn't go five days and I'm getting ready to travel guess what every day I started seeing myself ending up in a hospital in Canada when I close my eyes even to pray I would see myself on the bed in a hospital bed with all these things fixed to my body and I said no in Jesus name no you know what A minister was with me a minister friend of mine and while we were sharing sharing God's word you know discussing scriptures discussing scriptures and we were so blessed and the anointing was just there and when this anointing was rising like this rising like this rising like this I said thank you Jesus well we ended the meeting and as we were going away I turned I said please hold on I had a brand new s-class Mercedes I'd only just driven it twice so I called someone I said go get me the keys they brought the keys I give to the friend of mine who's a minister I said take he said take what I said carry the car he said carry what he knew the car he knew there's a brand new car he said carry what I said please just carry it just take it away take it he got inside the car and drove it away as he drove it away the sensation I've been having here stopped he didn't even know that I had anything troubling me there that sensation stopped as he drove the car away Oh, was I glad I went back inside I said Lord Jesus oh glory to God hallelujah thank you Jesus glory to God now what would I have given if I'd been in the hospital I don't know but I don't want to be in the hospital the cow would be nothing for a man in the hospital bed dying See, listen you think oh God must protect me he will protect you but he wants you to follow his principles he said bearing precious seed he said shall doubtless am I not here with rejoicing now Amen. hallelujah Amen. are you still in that place I said let no man deceive you we know what to do it's in the word of God and some people think come God. Ezekiel chapter 44 I said I want to read something to you practicing God's word is the way to the supernatural practicing doing the word of God is for doing are you hearing me the word of God is for doing listen you know there are there are there are people including ministers because some of you you look at us like this and you say ah this is what this is spending money on and he likes to buy suits do you know every suit that I have worn during this meeting so far was bought for me are you hearing me when I'm having a meeting I don't know how many of them bought me suits here who are sitting here even pastor Roger Singh you, you, you got me one today with two shirts all right no that's the way it is I got five from another and then uh, Pastor Toya brought two are you hearing what I'm saying 
And all of them have said, we want you to wear this during the program. There's a brother that just came from London. You sent me five shirts today. Do you understand what I'm talking about? I don't need to spend money on those things. So when people see us, they think that we are squandalous. See that I didn't even buy a single one. Including the shoes, I didn't buy. The microphone I'm using was sent to me from Toronto, Canada. Are you hearing me? Are you in this place? I say this to you. I say this to you. If it was money we were looking for, we already have. That's not what we're looking for. We are using it for the glory of God. Not for trying to make us one big thing or the other. No. No. But I'm showing you the good and the right way. From verse 30, I want you all to read. Verse 30, one, two, go. Did you forget Ezekiel chapter 44? Verse 30, one, two, go. Hallelujah. Did you see it for yourself? That is a principle in the house of God. And how many Christians don't observe these things and expect their way to be prosperous. There are many people, including old Christians, they've been Christians for donkey years, but their lives don't show that Christ has been with them. And if they heard what I was sharing with you now, they're going, ah, well, but. There's so much but, but in their lives. But, and but. Okay, but. Okay. Continue. I'm talking about the way of prosperity. Bale ko sata mandili baya. Zagabaya. <laughs> Thank you, Lord Jesus. Woohoo! Learn the right thing for yourself. And this is the time. Are you hearing me? This is the time. Don't let others deceive you. Stay focused in the Word of God. Understand it for yourself. Look at Proverbs. Book of Proverbs. Let me read something to you there. Chapter 3. Proverbs chapter 3. Verse 9. I want you all to read verse 9. Again, honor the Lord Let me tell you something. In Europe, now I don't know I don't know whether that's that's what you experience here. But let me tell you something about Europe. Many of you have been to Europe. In the shopping mall, you would see a 75 year or an 80 year old man or even a 90 year old man he may be with a stick walking as slowly as he can in the shopping mall trying to go get something for himself how old is he 85 or 90 he's going to try to buy something for himself where are, where are his children they are, they are misbehaving somewhere all over the world. See him. 90. Why? Because this was 
was what he did when he was a little boy to his father so now he's 90 he doesn't even think anything's wrong now look at him suffering going to the shopping mall what does he want to buy socks <laughs> no I want to show you but just socks not life why has it been neglected because it built a society with the same spirit are you hearing me the bible tells us about the prodigal son who spent everything on himself the bible says and no man gave unto him nobody gave him anything there are some of you here now um Thank you, Lord Jesus. There's some of you here, you've never experienced anybody giving you anything substantial. Okay? What do you give when it's a friend's birthday? What do you give? Some funny plaques. Huh? A picture frame. Or you would give, you give <laughs> some funny flower. Some of you do that. You are not used to receiving. Because you are not used to giving. You are not a giver. So you buy one funny uh, ceramic lion. Small, small ceramic lion. With a rope on its neck. <laughs> you give it to your friend for his birthday. As a gift. You are an embarrassment. You see, but you don't know it because that's the way you were brought up. That's the way you were brought up. You're not used to giving. Five of you as friends who go to the restaurant after eating, everybody will bring out his own money to pay. Nobody can say, I pay for everybody. <laughs> no. Selfish men and women. But you think it's good life. Make a difference. Say this with me. I decide to be different. Listen, when you become a giver, some people will think you are scandalous. No, 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 no. A thousand times no. The times that you will give unto you, it looks like you don't have anything anymore. No! The giver is more blessed than the receiver. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Somebody says, I've had this sickness in my body for a long time. I have prayed. I have fasted. I have cried. I have done everything. I have one more thing that you have not done. Give your best. Give your best. Give your best. There are some of you here. That car that you are driving up and down. That is the thing that God is asking you for. But you won't give it. But your salvation is in that car. I'm telling you. You see, the things that God gives to us, the wealth that God gives to us, He gives to us to use for, to, for, for delivering ourselves from trouble, for saving ourselves, for saving our children, for delivering our own future. But many of us don't know. We think all those things are just for us to enjoy. No, but the more you give, the more you receive anyway. Did I tell you that when I gave, I became broke? I didn't become broke. The more I gave, the more I received. The more I gave, the more I received. So I knew it was better to give. I'm telling you this. So that the next time I come here, I will see that many of you have been promoted. Many of you, your businesses are prospering. I want to see that. I want to see you on top. That's why I'm sharing this with you. So that you know the way of prosperity. 
and you become greater than your peers this is the simple principle if you don't use it you become a loser but you've got to use it and as you do it rejoice evermore do it and rejoice evermore there are some of you here people think that you are tithers and givers but God knows your heart you don't give you don't tithe but you are known as Mr. Mr. Uh, accountability no you you are so straight outwardly before men you know we have to be accountable you are very accountable but you don't give to God no in your offering you know how to do it you look at it now look at I've taken a hundred from here now mm. <laughs> nobody saw what you gave but God saw it continue continue the day we ask you to come forward to give you are angry you feel better when the bag is being passed so that you can put that thing that nobody can see the Bible says the left hand should not see what the right hand is giving. So, you think it's an excuse for giving an insult to God. When the Bible says nothing is too small for you to give to God, it's relative. You have to give according to the blessing that God has blessed you. If the only way God has blessed you is under run, give according to the blessing but there are some of us who will be embarrassed to be giving God an offering on Sunday morning that is 100 rand embarrassment of the highest order no how are you looking at me like that you think it doesn't matter what you give to God the Bible says to so give according as God has blessed you you know that God has blessed you more but you're coming to the house of God with change you see and you expect your blessing to continue no you have put a full stop on your blessing you have removed promotions from your life that is the reason why some people five years ago seven years ago they were big they were prosperous but today seven years after the furniture in their house has not changed seven years after they can't change the car without going into terrible debt seven years after the wardrobe is finished seven years after mr big man of seven years ago is now a small man seven years after because you did not see the future what life do you want to live You want to be former so and so, former so and so, former so and so. If you want your life, look at the Bible. Look at Abraham. When Abraham was old, the Bible says Abraham was blessed in all things. That's the way I want to be. When David was old, he crowned his own successor and gave him wealth. That was what happened to Isaac, Jacob. But look at, look at, look at, look at, in most places, when the man is old, he needs to be taken care of by all and sundry. Why do you think people are fighting the government? Because they are not independent. They celebrate independence of the nation. But they, are, they themselves are not independent. So they are looking for a government that will take care of their welfare when they are old. You are wasting your time. I have news for you. According to this Bible, there is no government that is going to help you out with it. They may form the policies, but they will not have the ability to carry it through. So why don't you learn the simple principles now from God's word to put you ahead? So la bakaya la manilebosa. Listen, maybe tonight I'm not talking to everybody. I don't know. But I'm talking to those who are for the way of prosperity. I'm talking to those who are for success. I'm talking to those who are for victory. Hallelujah. Glory to his name forever. Some of you, watch in the next five years.
still there? Yes. You have to understand these things. Are you hearing me? Yes. Understand what I'm sharing with you. The word of God works. It works. It works. It works. It works. It works. Glory to God. It works. It works. It works. Put money in your savings account and you're looking to the bank and asking the bank please what is the best policy good idea let me tell you the only things I do with the bank is to give them extra money that I don't know what to do with yet and I'm I'm learning that is not even the best place to put it when you have extra money you don't you don't know what to do with yet do you know from time to time I pray to God I say oh God show me the next thing I should give money to who do you want me to give who do you what I pray like that I pray like I'm, I'm, I'm like you know I got this thing you know and I'm, I'm looking like what next do I do who is supposed to be a beneficiary No, for birthday celebrations. I, I don't send people, I don't send, uh, what do you call them? Plagues. Those are, what are you talking about? I can see that the hand of God is mighty on you. Do you know what? Let me show you something. The reason I'm telling you, I believe that God has a special purpose for you. I have my outline. My outline has nothing to do with what I've told you in the last 30 minutes. Are you hearing me? Nothing of what I've shared with you in the last 30 minutes. It must mean that God wants to do something about your finances. That's why. That's why. He wants to do something about your finances. And you know, there are people who suffer so many things because of money. No money. There are things that you would have loved to do. But now people think you are selfish because you don't have the money. But the only way is what I've told you. In that verse 9 of chapter 3, the book of Proverbs, it says, Honor the Lord with thy substance. How do you honor God with your substance? Is it by saying, Praise the Lord, it is God that has given this to me? Uh -uh. It says, Honor the Lord with thy substance and with the first fruits of all thine increase. Let, let's read it. No, no, no. We're all going to read it together. Proverbs chapter 3. We're reading verses 9 and 10. Are you ready? Yeah. Want to go? Can you see that? God said to honor him with what? Your substance. And with the first fruits of all your increase. He says, so shall your bands be filled with plenty. And your presses shall burst out with new wine. He tells you the result is prosperity. Now, how can you leave that? How can you neglect that? 
and still be asking, oh God, what am I going to do? I don't have a job. I, I, there's no way, nobody to help me. Nobody to help you. Did he write anybody's name there? By God's own supernatural methods. Now, in the 30th verse of the 44th chapter of the book of Ezekiel that I told you to read. Did you notice something there? He said, let me read it to you. You read it yourself the first time. Okay, listen now. Ezekiel chapter 44 verse 30. He says, and the first, now the right rendering is the best. Some of your versions will have that. The best of all, the first fruits of all things. We have a tape on first fruits. Order for it. So you can listen to it again and again and understand what the Bible means by first fruits. The first fruit of all things. And every oblation. Of every sort of your oblations. Talking about offerings. Shall be the priests. You shall also give unto the priest the first of your dough, that he may cause the blessing to rest in your house. Look at it. Look at it. That he may cause the blessing to rest in your house. Did you read when Jesus said, when you go to preach? And you enter into a house. Say peace be upon this house. He said if the son of peace be there. Your peace will remain there. He said if the son of peace is not there. He said walk away. And your peace will not stay there. It will go with you. What does Jesus mean by that? Book of Numbers. Chapter 18. Are you there? Can I read it to you quickly? Alright. Verse 8. And the Lord spake unto Aaron. Behold I also have given thee charge. Who was Aaron? The high priest. I have given thee charge of my heave offerings. Of all the hallowed things of the children of Israel. Unto thee have I given them by reason of the anointing. Do you know what he's saying? He says he asked the children of Israel to take their offerings of all kinds to the priests. He said I told them to bring them to you. Why? He said because of the anointing. Now Ezekiel explains it. That he may cause the blessing to rest upon your house. Now when you come to church you bring your offering to the house of God. When you bring it and the minister receives the offering and proclaims the blessing upon you if you have done it according to the principle the blessing will rest upon your house which means everything that happens from that house will prosper every child from that house every project from that house every business from that house he says that he may cause the blessing were these people sinners? No, these were God's children. He shows us how to walk in prosperity in the house of God. But many don't understand. So they think that, oh, I'm giving that thing to the pastor. So and that means I'm losing. No! It is because of the anointing. There is a connection. It is the anointing. He said he told Aaron to have those things. Get those things from them. They give them to you. He says, because of the anointing. When that anointing comes upon you, people cannot understand why you are so prosperous. Why the little that you do turns into tremendous success. They can't explain it. They can't explain it. Your prosperity becomes inexplicable. Why? Because you are using divine principles. Divine principles. Let me tell you, if you have a farm, learn it now. Everybody else around you may complain. That nothing is happening right with their farms. But something will be happening right with yours. You have a business, the same thing. You have a job, the same thing. Connect what you do 
to the anointing of God's Spirit. You know, many Christians, they think that if they call their company by a name in the Bible, it will become prosperous. So they write it. Melchizedek Motus. <laughs> it will still fail. Jehovah Rapha Hospital. People will still be dying there. <laughs> because it's not by calling it the name there. He says, where is your precious seed? Where is it? Let me tell you. There was one time. I was having some some heat from some people you know talking talking rubbish you know writing rubbish i got myself ready praying in the holy ghost praying in the holy ghost and when i was fed up of it i gave a seed it caught them <laughs> off all their talking ceased their folly was made manifest if you have adversaries you don't need to cry just take your seat dance to the house of God hallelujah Push. <laughs> no you can't give such offerings to God without things changing in the spirit realm everything altered hallelujah are you still in this place oh yeah I said your wealth is for your deliverance it's for your deliverance it's for your deliverance your wealth is for your deliverance they said that man was so nice to everybody how was he to God did he give his seed to God no he may have given everybody else listen there's a difference between arms giving are you hearing me and your seed to God when you give arms God accepts your arms but that has a different promise you have to understand that it's like so many ball games but they all go by different rules when you play volleyball do you look for the goal post if you carry it and run to a goal post and throw it inside have you scored because it's not football are you hearing me so if you are in danger and you're giving arms to the poor that will not save you give arms to the poor the bible says he that give it to the poor lend it unto the lord which means that he's going to bless you you're going to prosper and you will not be poor Amen. not being poor and being rich are two different things he says he lend it unto the lord which means he will pay you back yes. there's a difference between <laughs> listen you know when you lend to the lord he will pay you back that is different from an abundance of blessings that is different from a deliverance here is a man prospering and helping everybody helping the society society is not God give to Caesar that which is Caesar's and give to God that which is God's so while you are doing Caesar's own remember the only one who will save you <laughs> his name is Jesus can you say amen so here is and then he's taking a, a drive. He's killed. And we say, but the man was a very good man. He was a Christian. Oh, he was a Christian. Why did they kill him like that? Where was his seed? Your seed is an insurance. Where was his seed? Many times when God begins to motion on you, inspire you to give, it's not because he's looking for something no he needs a point of contact and there are different types when, when when David became king he gave offerings to the Lord he was blessed one bull in the morning one bull in the night that's how he was doing it but then his son Solomon David taught him and said look my son be wise ask for wisdom 
not for things he said yes sir but guess what the guy was smart when he ascended the throne instead of bringing to God one bull for sacrifice the first time that he will come to the temple as king Solomon comes with 1,000 of them instead of one one was enough he came with 1,000 until the priest started looking for help to slaughter these things the Bible says that night the Lord appeared to Solomon that night Everybody gives one, one, one. The guy came with one thousand. The Lord showed up in his room and said, Solomon, what do you want? He said, Nothing, sir. Just loving you. He said, Ask for anything. The young guy said, Give me wisdom and understanding. God said, You did not ask for the life of your enemies, you didn't ask for long life. You didn't ask for prosperity. He says, son, all what you didn't ask for, I have given you. What you didn't ask for, he said, I have given you. Then wisdom and understanding are for you. And he became the wisest man that ever lived until Jesus. How did it come about? He said, because that's what brought God into his room that day. Can you see it? Many of us think, oh, he was very smart. He asked for wisdom and understanding. No, it was not just wisdom and understanding. He had been praying before. Something changed. It was Solomon's seed that brought the presence of God that was ready to give an answer to his request. Have you not been praying for the same wisdom and knowledge and understanding? Has he given you? No. Why? Where's your seed? <laughs> where's your seed no seed you're just give me wisdom I as you gave to Solomon no what about Solomon's seed Solomon came with 1,000 of them no you are giving 50 rand and you say give me wisdom it doesn't happen that way are you still here tell somebody the word of God is for doing say it again the word of God is for doing one more time the word of God is for doing one more time the word of God is for doing doing hallelujah I said hallelujah 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 said hallelujah I found how to give my way out of confusion I found how to give my way out of lack out of intimidation I can't suffer any of those things why my seed I'm armed with my seed seed tell somebody seed you know the Bible says as long as the earth remains notice listen he says many Christians haven't read it right he says seed time and harvest he didn't say seed time and harvest time read your bible he says seed time and harvest cold and heat summer and winter he didn't say seed time and harvest time the bible says all scripture is given by inspiration of god and it's profitable for doctrine for reproof for correction for instruction in god's right living you know what I'm saying? Righteousness. But we have to understand what, what do you mean by righteousness? Living in the way of God. Seed time and harvest. Which means there is a time to sow. But a harvest, God has restricted harvest to no time. So in the kingdom of God, there's no such thing as I am awaiting my harvest. I'm awaiting my harvest. No! He said, seed time and harvest. So there is no waiting to say, harvest has not yet come. The plants the Bible talks about in heaven produce the 
same time. Read it. Constantly. 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 Which means the moment you give your sorry, you make your sorry, heaven responds. That means as soon as you make your release, you might as well begin to dance about your receiving. Start dancing about your receiving, brother. You think it's okay. God says, mm -mm. it's not this one. But you know, between you and him. Because you are giving him protection of another. So you are trying to make God see all those other ones. Lord, I give you this. God says, no, the one behind you. No, Lord, I give you two times of this. God says, no, it's that one. God said, Abraham, give me your son. Your only son. Isaac. He didn't ask for his cousin. Some of you would have gone to bring your cousin. He said, give me your son. Your only son. Very emphatic. So there was no way of taking Lot's children. Where is your Isaac? Keep it, keep it in your box. And then be ready to suffer. Everybody will pray. And nobody will understand why your own sickness is not living. The goiter is getting larger. Everybody is casting out, rebuking, praying, laying hands until you're almost bored from the laying on of hands. And yet, nothing is happening. Your seed is needed. Mandubu shakata mai. Radabai labasakataya. Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. I said hallelujah. Thank you Lord Jesus. Praise God forevermore. Thank you Lord. Thank you Lord. Amen. Yeah. You may be known as Mr. Company. You are the, you are the pillar of the company where you work. Mr. Honesty. You are the only one that goes to work on Sunday. <laughs> they are sure to have you there. No, it's like, you know, there are some people who love to go to the church. It's church, they like to go and arrest people. You know, there are criminals everywhere. But they will go to the church to look for criminals, to arrest criminals in church. You are in trouble. You, you know, there are policemen like that. They won't go anywhere else. But they go to church to harass people. Why are you parking here? Church in the house of God. You are not afraid. No, continue. When you are 65 years old, your eyes will open. Continue. No, your own kind of suffering. Nobody can help you when it starts. Continue. You, your children, everything. You don't know what you are doing. You go to churches to harass churches? Kaya! Can anybody be more cursed than that? And then the pastors and ministers are begging you. Hey! No. When your trouble starts, all your friends will shift away from you. Those ones who are praising you for doing what you're doing now. When your trouble begins, you will so smell that nobody will want to come close to you. No, continue. Continue. 
Where, where you have trouble, you won't go there. You go to churches to harass churches. They must keep to the law in the church. So it's only those in the church that must keep to the law now. As far as you are concerned. Continue. Liga Angro Basoti Kevrabando Liga Bahaste Tonja Maria. Tell somebody, fear God. Fear Say it again, fear God. fear God. I'm telling you, fear God. fear God. He may not take action against you immediately. There is, there's a reason why he's not acting against you immediately. He is waiting for you to hear what I'm telling you now. So that you can repent. There are people who go and steal mobile phones in the church. They steal mobile phones in the church. You are in trouble. Stealing is not good anywhere. But that you would come into the house of God and perform your feats. <laughs> no, you haven't seen anything yet. In the realm of the spirit, you are smelling like a he goat right now. But you are the only one that doesn't know. Angels don't come around you. Because you are smelling in the realm of the spirit. No, but you don't know. No, you are dressed. You see a handbag, you collect the handset from there. You believe you have won. Continue. Continue. Very soon, your eyes will open. I only pray that you don't discover yourself too late. Are you hearing me? This is the time to give your heart to Christ. This is the time to make a change. 